Experts say the cyber attack that's closed off a major U.S. fuel pipeline for days is a wake-up call to industry groups and other companies about their vulnerability. The operator, Colonial Pipeline, says some of the lateral lines are now up and running, but the main lines are still offline. For more on this, I'm joined by J.J. Green, National Security Correspondent for WTOP in Washington, D.C. J.J., good to have you. Good to be here, Rudy Bay. All right, so we've come to you before uh, to talk about cyber breaches as they happen, and usually it's a headline and then people forget about them and move on. But this is exactly the sort of thing you and others have said could happen as a result. Yeah, and uh, there are two reasons why this is a problem. This is the largest pipeline of its type in the country. It's a national security issue because this is a pipeline that's 5,500 miles long and it produces 3 million barrels a day of jet fuel, gas, and diesel. And some of its clients include the largest passenger airport in the world, Hartsfield Jackson, right there in Georgia, where this pipeline is headquartered. But you've also got all of the other consumers and consumer organizations that use the uh, product from this particular pipeline. And the second part of this problem, too, is that it happened. There should be something in place at least in the minds of the people in the security division at this particular pipeline and every other major U.S. corporation that says we can't allow this to happen. So how did it happen? So those are the two things that are very serious concerns tonight when we look at why this happened. And of course, cyber attacks can affect every aspect of infrastructure and shut down an entire society. What do you know about the potential threats down the line? Well, as long as people don't get it, it's going to keep happening. And when I say get it, there are all sorts of ways that ransomware and malware can be placed on computer systems that run operations like this, but it's usually some type of social engineering that takes place before. Clicking on links, visiting suspicious websites, those kinds of things. People in those situations, in positions that where they have control over systems like this, have to be very careful. And that apparently is something that hackers recognize isn't happening, so they're taking advantage of. Uh, and you mentioned as long as people don't get it, it's still going to keep happening. Is the government doing enough to prevent it? And can it even keep up with a threat that's evolving in this way? Well, the, the part about the government doing enough, um, the government's doing what it can. It can't force people to do anything when it comes to this, because again, you know, you're talking here about the private sector. You, 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 you have to look at this from the private sector's point of view. They're trying to make money. And in some cases, maybe they're not being as careful as they should. The government spent an, an, enorm, an enormous amount of time over the last few years telling companies and people, citizens like us, what we need to be looking out for. The problem is some of these companies just have to get more serious about this. So you don't think this attack on a private company is an indicator of what could potentially happen on a national level as far as government is concerned and infrastructure? Oh, I do. I mean, we've had two major attacks that have happened this year. Solar Winds is one, and then there was another one uh, that took place that essentially stole a lot of data, put some of that data out on the, the, the dark net. Uh, and so, yes, this is a problem. Uh, this is a national problem, and it is a problem that could impact the average person like myself or, or anyone else. But it could be a national problem. The issue here, though, is there are ways to prevent this. And the situation that really, in my mind, from talking to the people who deal with this on a daily basis from a security perspective, is just to get people to pay attention and to do more to stop this kind of uh, behavior that leaves the door open for this to happen. And we all hear, you know, we get these trainings uh, in the corporate world on not clicking on spam and not clicking on phishing sites. But why should the average person really pay attention to this? I mean, if nothing else, our gas prices could go up now. Our airline ticket prices could go up, right? Why should the average person really be um, paying attention? Pick up your mobile phone. Take a look at it. Look at all the apps that you have on there. Look at all of the information about you that's on that phone. And then think about this. The same people that hacked this pipeline and other that launch other hacks use the same tools that we do. But what the difference is though, they have an inordinately more complicated uh, thought process because they wanna use that information of others. They wanna steal it. 
so they know how we think when we use these devices and computers and tablets. So they know how we think because they have the exact same tools that we have, but they have a whole different purpose for using them. So that's why the average person person should think about it. You have money in the bank, you have uh, a digital footprint, you have your own privacy issues that you want to be, uh, you want to take care of. Those people that use uh, this kind of activity um, and use these kinds of devices, uh, specifically hack these kinds of devices, I should say, they're not interested in your safety or your security or mine. They're interested in their own pocketbooks and they want to take out of yours to put into theirs. That's why everybody should pay attention to this. Well, I think that's a very good reason. J.J. Green, thank you very much for speaking with us tonight on News Nation. J.J. Green is the national security correspondent at WTOP. Good night. Thanks.